adore him lift up your voices sing it
Good evening, and welcome to Greenwood Christian Church's Christmas Eve service. We are thrilled to be able to worship with you this evening. Whether you're in-house or you're at home on our online services, one of the things we're going to do that's really special tonight is to take communion as one body. So if you missed getting a communion cup on the way in, raise your hand nice and big, and our ushers will get one to you. You know, Christmas Eve is one of my very favorite days of the whole year. It's the way we worship through songs that are familiar, and I love it. So sing loud, sing proud, worship our one true Savior, Jesus Christ. And welcome, Merry Christmas to all. Well, again, uh, we are so glad that we get to worship with you, uh, those who are here with us in person, those who have joined us online. Um, certainly, probably for many of us, uh, bidding adieu to 2020 is uh, something that we're glad to do as we look forward uh, with hope to what God will do in and through this place in 2021. We're going to do uh, things just a little bit differently than we normally do with our Christmas Eve services here. Uh, we worked really hard this year to make sure we could connect uh, what happened here in the room uh, with what's going on uh, for those who are online. And so we've got a, a mixture of readings. Some will happen here. Uh, some will actually uh, have taken place in other living rooms and been filmed uh, and will be here as a part of our service just so that we can connect both we get to the very end of service, we'll cue you for this, um, but at the end of our service, usually we have tea lights that we hand out uh, when we sing Silent Night. We decided we didn't want to pass all that stuff through multiple services this year, so we're going to ask everybody to grab out their cell phone later on in the service, and we'll use those lights, uh, whether you're here or you're at home. So what we're going to do uh, is we're going to go through, uh, we're going to light five different candles throughout uh, our time together. Uh, and, and that's uh, basically a, a practice of Advent. It's a, a reminder of just our hope and our longing uh, for what uh, Jesus uh, would bring to this world when God sent him. And so throughout the service, we'll read and we'll sing a little bit and we'll light candles. And we do, when we light those candles, we'll have this refrain that I'd love for us uh, to say together now and we'll say together later on. So let's do this. We light this candle as a sign of our waiting and hope for the coming Christ. Let's say that one more time. We light this candle as a sign of our waiting and hope for the coming Christ. Amen. Well, we're going to continue. Uh, we're going to read Scripture, and uh, let's get started with my good friend Evan. Isaiah 9-2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. A light has dawned on those living in the land of darkness. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. We light this candle as a sign of our waiting and hope for the coming Christ.
This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public divorce or to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home to be his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave them the name Jesus. We light this candle as a sign of our waiting and hope for the coming Christ. Luke 1 through 7, the birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expect expecting a child. Where should I go? Right here? Yeah. yeah. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. Okay. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son she wrapped, him a clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Good job. Hmm. If you're not already, why don't you stand and sing with us?
Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The herald angels sing glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy, my old God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies with angelic. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Second birth, heart the herald. 
the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. We light this candle as a sign of our waiting and hope for the coming of Christ.
Hi, I'm so glad that we get... Matthew 2, 1 through 7. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. We light this candle as a sign of our waiting and hope for the coming Christ. Well, if you're anything like me this year, uh, I have been driven crazy with some of the cliche phrases that get thrown out all the time, like, oh, this is a fluid situation, and these are unprecedented times and all of that. Well, all that being said, uh, out of an abundance of caution, uh, we made a change today in uh, our Christmas Eve services. Uh, my good friend and our senior minister, Matt Giebler, woke up this morning just not feeling great. We're sure that Matt is fine, but just to be safe, knowing the number of folks that we'd have coming through uh, today with our services, uh, we went ahead. Matt came over early today, and just two of us were here uh, and filmed him just to keep everybody else safe and all of that. So Matt's going to join us via video for Christmas Eve tonight. Hi, I'm so glad that we get to be together. Um, in this season, I totally understand why even the, the slightest tickle in my throat is cause for caution, but I really do want you to know how bummed I am to not be with you in person. Christmas Eve is one of my favorite services every year. You know, some things can only be understood in hindsight. Back in 2005, our kids had never had a dog, so we decided that we ought to get a puppy. Now, we expected that having a puppy would be fun, but we could not have predicted how much getting Maggie would change our lives. Maggie made us crazy about golden retrievers, and since that time, we've now had at least one golden for the last 16 years. Golden retrievers are a huge part of our family. Life at our house is golden, and so is the hair all over our furniture. In ninth grade, I was living in Missouri, and I sang in the choir with a cute girl. And I could not have predicted at that point in time that 34 years later, we'd be married for 28 years, that he, we would have uh, three kids and two golden retrievers, and that we'd live in Indiana. There's obviously been a lot of story between those two bookends. See, hindsight enables us to see that much of what happens had a much earlier cause. Babies, for example, don't just materialize out of thin air. Kids, you should take Christmas morning to ask your mom and dad about that. You know, Economic conditions don't just happen. Wars don't just start randomly. When we look back, we often see connections between events that just weren't readily apparent to us at the time. And the events of Jesus' birth are really a great example of that. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, tells a story about an imperial decree, a government census, a road trip, an inn with no vacancy, a repurposed manger, an angelic announcement, and curious shepherds. And tucked away in that story is this sentence that's found in verse 19 of Luke chapter 2. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Now at one time that sentence struck me as a sentimental statement, almost like Mary had this emotional, touchy-feely experience and she made a scrapbook. But the year that we've had prompts me to look at this verse a little differently than I ever have before. See, you and I see what Mary and Joseph experienced in hindsight. You and I are able to connect the dots of Old Testament prophecy and a number of New Testament events and 2,000 years of missionary activity that has literally taken the message of Jesus all over the world. But their perspective was very different. Think about it. A young, unmarried virgin found herself suddenly and miraculously pregnant. She and her fiancé had their lives completely disrupted by a government edict. Late in Mary's pregnancy, they had to travel about 90 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem, probably on foot or by donkey. Once they got to Bethlehem, they found no lodging. So Mary probably gave birth in a place that was neither clean nor private. Can you imagine delivering a baby in an alley? Put yourself in the shoes of any character in that story, and in that moment, you could not possibly have predicted all that Jesus would say or do or become or accomplish. You couldn't have known that that tiny baby in the manger would grow up to be a powerful teacher and miracle worker who would live a life of perfect obedience to God. You wouldn't have expected him to be killed 
on a cross for the world's sins. You certainly couldn't have predicted that he would rise from the dead and spark a global movement that would transform millions of lives. You'd need some time to process what had just happened. And Mary did too. See, we experience many of the events in our lives without any clue where they'll lead. You and I in this moment can't predict how meeting this person or going to that school or stopping for this conversation, or taking that job, or moving into this neighborhood, or making that investment, or receiving this diagnosis, or experiencing that loss is going to impact our lives. But God does. You and I, however, are limited to the present, and there is only so far down the road that our headlights are able to see. Mary had a lot of things to ponder in her heart, and after 2020, I think you'd agree that so do we. We've now lived for months with this virus that most of us had never even heard of a year ago. We've learned to do all sorts of things from home. We've become experts at working from home, doing school from home. We do shopping and meetings and Bible studies and worship services. Many of you are watching this from your living rooms right now. We've binged a lot of TV shows. We've gained some weight. Some of us have lost it. We've picked up some new hobbies. We've added masks as an accessory to every outfit. We've grown accustomed to watching ball games played in empty stadiums. And we've been through a stressful election season that has politicized all sorts of things. We've canceled vacations. Many of us have altered our holiday plans. Most of that, we didn't see coming back in February. We've lived with uncertainty for months now. And while a vaccine is just becoming available, certain uncertainties remain. And we wonder how soon, if ever, we'll be able to get back to life as we remember it. You know, as you and I face uncertainty, we have choices to make. In the face of uncertainty, we can worry, we can stress, we can tie ourselves in knots with fear, or we can zone out and just try to distract ourselves. We can bury ourselves in social media, we can start a new show on Netflix, we can play more video games, just have a little more to eat or a little more to drink, or just hit the snooze bar and hope we can go back to sleep. Or... We have the option of anchoring our lives in truth we can count on. You know, this pandemic caught us off guard, but God was not at all surprised by it. And nothing that's happened this year changes the eternity-altering reality that Jesus, the Son of God, entered our world to rescue us. He paid for our sins with his life at the cross and conquered death once and for all. And that means that because of Jesus, you and I have a hope that has absolutely nothing to do with COVID. Virus or no virus, we are loved. Whether our county's status is yellow, orange, or red on any given day, we have hope. With or without a vaccine, life is available. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. We don't often see what God is up to until after the fact, and that makes reflection a really crucial part of seeing him work. So could I encourage us for these next few days, to take a cue from Mary and treasure up all these things and ponder them in our hearts, these next few days, this Christmas weekend, would be a perfect time for us to just slow down, put down our phones, turn off the TV, be still, and listen. I mean, consider what God is doing in your life. Consider what God is doing in our world. What's changed in the last year? And more importantly, what hasn't changed? How has God blessed you? How has God enabled you to be a blessing to others? Think it over and never stop looking to Jesus. All of us here at Greenwood Christian Church want to wish you and your loved ones a happy and healthy and Jesus-centered Christmas. And we invite you now to join us in 2021 because it's going to be a great year of growth and intentionality for all of us. Merry Christmas. Let me pray for us. Father God, we thank you so much for your stability your faithfulness. God, in a a year that has been full of questions, in a year that's been full of things being turned upside down, we are so grateful that you do not change. We thank you for the hope that Jesus brought into our world with his birth, the hope that came alive through his resurrection, and we thank you, God, that we have the opportunity to live our lives in that hope. We pray that these next few days, as we back away from some of our normal routines and activities, would be a time, Lord, where we connect with you, a time where we treasure up all the different things that we have experienced in the last several months, that we ponder in our heart, God, where you are in the midst of all of that, and that we prepare ourselves for what you have in store for us next. Lord, I'm so grateful for my friends here at Greenwood Christian, and we ask, Lord, that you would help us to make Jesus the central focus, not only of Christmas, but of every other part of our lives. We pray all of these things in his name. Amen.
Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. We light this candle as a sign of our waiting and hope for the coming Christ. That uh, fifth and final candle that Holly just lit is often called the Christ candle. Um, it's white. It symbolizes just the purity of his sinless life on this earth and his victory over death, which is just a perfect segue uh, into our time of communion. So if you want to grab out uh, those little cups that you got on the way in, um, if you're uh, joining us online, if you can gather together whatever elements you've decided on for our time of communion. We would love to celebrate that and remember together. Uh, now, i got to warn you, unless you want to wear uh, your communion tonight, uh, you got to be a little careful here of getting these open, but um, there is a clear uh, plastic tab that you can pull first, and that'll get the bread out for you. This bread... Uh, symbolizes the body of our Savior. You know, in, in this season of Christmas, we focus on the little baby, the, the coming to earth narrative, but we don't forget what his mission was, that some 33 years or so later, that he would go to a cross and be raised to life so that we can have life. And this bread symbolizes his body. Let's eat this together now. tab back. You can get to the juice. This reminds us of his blood shed for us on the cross. Let's drink the juice together. Now, if I can ask you just for the next couple of moments to be careful. Um, we're trying to make sure we don't spill the juice all over everything in here. We've got uh, receptacles that, uh, that you can toss that in on your way out, but uh, we're going to pray, and, uh, and then we're going to sing Silent Night. Uh, and if you've got that cell phone somewhere close, whether you're at home hanging out with us or you're here in the room, uh, you're welcome to pull that out. Once we start Silent Night, you can illuminate that. And uh, it'll be just a kind of a great reflective moment. We're so glad we get to worship with you on Christmas Eve. Let's pray. God, as Matt said, 2020 is not um, the year any of us expected. Um, we come into this holiday season, uh, many of us just feeling joyous. We're excited because of all the things going on in our lives, but God, lots of us come in with heartaches, with sorrows, with lament. Some of us in this room have gone through sickness this year. Probably most all of us in this room know somebody right now who's battling with the virus. And even aside from that, as we come to the holidays, those of us who have lost a loved one and are going to get to experience a, an empty spot at the table, maybe for the first time, maybe for the 20th time, and be reminded of, of that loss. Maybe for a lot of us, God, we're not going and doing the normal plans that we would do for Christmas this year. And even that fills us with um, sorrow. But God, in the midst of this season, we pause and we remember the gift of your son so that our hope isn't in this life. Our hope is in what is to come. Because as you raised him from the grave, you will raise us to eternal life with you. God, help us never, ever to forget that. In Jesus' name, amen. You can stand up, illuminate your cell phone, flashlight if you want. Let's sing together. Silent night, holy night, all is calm. All is bright round 
union, virgin, mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace. Christmas.